Hey Nathan here, welcome back to another mono game video. In this video we are going to discuss rotating objects and we're going to rotate it based on just a single float value. In the next few videos we will then turn around and discuss matrix transformations, but that's coming up. Right now we're just going to rotate an object based on a single float value. And you will see why this is an issue as we work on the program. So this is the, this code here is the last tutorials code and all I did was edit it to a new project and then I also am using a different image so you know how it's rotated, where it's, the next tutorial will be scaling so you can see how it's scaling as well and just things like that. It's a lot easier to see that when an arrow instead of a uh, circle, obviously, because a circle is rotated, it just looks exactly the same as it did before. So all I did was added everything to this solution, and then I just changed the asset name from ball to arrow. And then I just added the arrow to the content project, and then I built that. So if I run this, this is what it looks like. It's the exact same thing, just with an arrow texture. All right, so let's get started and actually create a rotation, a way to rotate. So let's go to the Sprite class here. Let's go to the very top. And you'll see we have color, velocity. Now we need to add two things here. Private, float, underscore angle and that just holds where we are rotated currently but then we need a private float rotation speed and that controls how fast it rotates then we have position rectangle texture bounds and let's add a private vector 2 underscore origin and that controls where we are rotating when we do rotation it it uses a point to rotate by and you'll see why we need to change this in this video too so we have position speed angle bounds let's add another optional uh, let's add that before bounds so another optional value, that's going to be float rotation speed is equal to zero. All right, and then angle is equal to angle. We had that in the last video, last few videos, so we can use that now. And we'll set rotation speed is equal to the rotation speed we're passing into it. Alright, now everything else is the same. Texture, position, rectangle. Then we have an origin that we need to have a property. So the property we're going to use is a public vector to origin, capital O, equals greater than underscore origin. And that's just going to return the origin value. Okay, so now we need to change the update rectangle. And we need to change this because the position is now influenced by the origin. Let me bring up the screen draw here. And let's bring up a color for, let's do black here. Okay, so we have an object here. The origin by default, and let's set this to red. The origin by default is 0, 0, which means the top left of the object. That is the default origin. So if your position is 30, 20, it's referring to this point here. All right, now let's say your origin is now, let's change this to green, is now the center of the object. So the origin is now the center. 
we still have a position of 30 comma 20. But now 30 comma 20 is here. So what we need to do is change where the position is no longer influenced by the origin, which means that we need to subtract, change this back to green here. We need to subtract the origin. So that's origin dot x. That's origin dot y. So we need to subtract the origin values to get to this point here. Because we need to generate the rectangle, which is this here. The rectangle does not start at the origin. The rectangle goes around the origin. So we need to change the way that the position is influencing the by the origin in order to generate the rectangle. So what we need to do is say vector to top left is equal to underscore position minus underscore origin. We need to take the origin's influence out of the equation to get to the top left coordinate. So now we just adjust the rectangle is equal to new rectangle. Instead of underscore position, we just use top left, top left. So we're using top left dot x and top left dot y. Uh, these two values are still the same. It's still going to be the width and the height. All right, next thing we need to do is update the rotation after we have updated the position. So update rotation. And we need to pass in the game time because we rotate based on the time that has elapsed. Like I mentioned, when we move a object, you want to use time instead of an actual numerical value. Because if your FPS is faster, you'll move faster. If your FPS is lower, you'll move slower. You use game time no matter what your FPS is. That way you move X amount of pixels in Y seconds, no matter what happens. So update rotation. We need to create a private void for update rotation, and it's going to take game time, game time. So that we're going to update the rotation value based on our rotation speed that we passed into the constructor the rotation speed here. And we need to do the exact same thing we do with the position value. So underscore angle plus equals cast this as a float open parentheses underscore rotation speed times game time dot elapsed game time dot total seconds. Total seconds. That's going to return a, uh, a double, so we need to cast that as a float to adjust the angle. Now, I like to keep things between 0 and 360 degrees, or 0 and 2 pi. The way that the angles work in X and A and Monogame is it's using radians, so we're, we're going to have to use 0 to 2 pi in this case. So if underscore angle is less than 0, I want to keep this between 0 and 2 pi. So if it's less than 0, it's going to be underscore angle. It's going to be a positive value. I don't want it to become a negative value. So a uh, underscore angle is equal to math helper dot 2 pi minus math.absolute value of underscore angle. Negative 10 degrees is the same thing as 350 degrees. 
And we're just doing that in a radian value, uh, a 2 pi value, not the uh, degrees. Else if underscore angle is greater than math helper dot 2 pi, we want it to start back at zero. So underscore angle is equal to underscore angle minus math helper dot 2 pi. So going back to degrees, since it's easier to mathematically explain this, 370 degrees is the same as 10 degrees. So that's what we're doing here. A 370 degrees minus 360 will give us 10 degrees. We're just using this in a radians. So that's how we update our rotation. We use the elapsed game time total seconds times the rotation speed, add that to the angle, and then adjust to where it's between 0 and 2 pi. All right, last thing we need to do is expand the draw call. So I'm going to remove all the arguments from the draw call. Underscore texture. That's going to be the first one, comma, underscore position, comma, null, comma, null, comma, underscore origin, comma, underscore angle, comma, null, comma, underscore color. And that's just expanded out to what we had before. We just provided the, ang the origin and the angle in this in this call that way we can rotate it all right save that all right so next up we need to adjust the debug sprite to provide the angular velocity so that's going to be after the let's see we have position speed angle rotation speed and bound so that's going to be after angle so up here, when we do public debug sprite, we have vector two position, color, rectangle color, float speed, float angle, comma. Then after that, let's have a float rotation speed is equal to zero, comma. Then we have rectangle bounds is equal to null. Then we call base, and on base we have to we ha we provide position comma speed comma angle comma and let's provide rotation speed and that will fix that call and the last thing that I changed for this video and then the next few videos since we're going to be doing more transformations and more rotations and scalings is I'm going to draw the original sprite where it should be before any rotation or scaling and then we're gonna have it by a smaller opacity so it'll be a little bit darker so sprite batch dot draw texture position and we are calling the properties because the fields are private so texture position comma null comma null comma vector 2.0 it's we're taking the origin out of account we're not using the origin we're not rotating so I'm gonna set that to zero as well uh, null and then color dot black times 0.1 F now that's gonna that's going to do that every game loop. So if you want to do that, you can do uh, introduce a field here. And I'm going to call this underscore original color. Next. Okay. So original color, I'm going to cut that. And I'm going to paste that in the 
constructor. So what I did is I created a private field here, a private color underscore original color. In the constructor for debug sprite, I put underscore original color is equal to color dot black times 0.1f. And then in the draw call, I provide underscore original color for the main texture that we will draw. I'm going to delete this blank line there. So that is it for that. You can save that. All right, next thing we need to do is go to the game1.cs file and adjust our debug sprite calls and fix this error and change out where the objects are and how they're being rotated. So underscore ball one, uh, let's go ahead and change that. So in the private field section, we have private debug sprite underscore ball one, change that to underscore arrow one, uh, arrow one, and underscore ball two, change it to underscore arrow two. And then arrow one, change that in the initialize method, change that to underscore arrow one and underscore arrow two. And in the load content, do the same thing. And in the unload content, do the same thing. In the update method, do the same thing. And in the draw call, in the draw method, do the exact same thing. All right, so we just changed the name of those, the private fields, just so they're arrows instead of balls. All right, so in the new debug sprite, in the initialize method, we have arrow one is equal to new debug sprite. The new vector do is the same. Uh, actually, let's adjust that while we're here. All right, so we're going to change everything, the uh, position values and speed, and we're just going to change everything. That way you will know and you will see that our collision detection will now be broken because we're now rotating objects. So the debug sprite, the this is fine, half of the height, but we're going to subtract by... 26 and that's influenced by the size of the texture all right then we have colored out white and then let's change this 200 here to let's say 50 and that's going to be the speed of our object as you see if you hover over debug sprite it lists you the what we need to provide and the order so after color is speed so we're just slowing it down a little bit. That way we can see more of what's going on. Uh, comma zero, that's fine. Comma, because that's the angle. But we want it to rotate over time. So I'm going to do math helper dot two radians. And let's say negative five degrees. And that's going to convert that to radians. Uh, game dimensions for the bounds is fine too. The second arrow, let's subtract uh, by 26 again. And color it up white, and let's slow it down again to 50. Uh, Math.pi, that's fine. And let's rotate it by a positive value this time. Rotate it over time. Math helper dot two radians sixteen. Just a little bit faster, and it's rotated in a different direction because it's positive. Clear color is black, and collision color is red. That should be fine. 
All right, let's press F5 and see what will happen. That does not look right, does it? Now, I intentionally did that on purpose. Look at the four corners. Let me restart this. Look at the four corners of the original sprite. Actually, let's change this color to this color here. I'm changing the clear color from black to that. That way you can see the original texture. The top left point of the original texture's bounds. Look at how those two objects are rotating. The origin is influencing the rotation based off the top left point. So why is it rotating that way? Well, if you look at our error list, sprite dot underscore origin is never assigned to and it will always have its default value, which will be vector 2.0. And I did that on purpose to indicate that the, the origin is influencing the rotation, the point where it's rotating. The top left point is the anchor point of the rotation. It's going to rotate based off that point. Now, if we want to rotate it in place, we need to point it to the center of the texture. So let's go into the sprite.cs file. And let's go to the constructor. And let's set our underscore origin is equal to vector 2.0. Now, we want to adjust it based on what our texture is, and we need to do that after we load the content. So on the on content loaded, before we update the rectangle, let's do underscore origin is equal to new vector2 underscore texture dot width divided by 2.0 f comma underscore texture dot height divided by 2.0 f so once we load our texture we can use the textures properties width and height and point the origin to the center of the texture now let's press f5 and let's see how it rotates so now it's rotating like it should in its place, the center of the texture. All right, let's adjust our position values a little bit. Let's change this. The uh, arrow one is equal to new debug sprite, where we have minus 26. All right, let's do a uh, minus 55. So right there we had a collision. So you can now see our collision is broken. We're still using per pixel collision detection. We're using per pixel collision detection, but our collision is now broken because we're rotating it. So in the next few videos, we're going to discuss matrix transformations and a way to make our life a lot easier. It'll make our life a lot easier by using per pixel collision detection and we just have to do more mathematics and more and we'll just have to do a different way of checking per pixel collision detection based on our transform matrix so if you run our code with the minus 55 here you will see that at the point where it changes to red those two objects are not touching so our per pixel collision detection is broken right there. So the fact that we have rotated it resulted in a broken collision detection system, which we will fix later on. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. 
stay tuned for the next video. It'll be a quicker video since we did all the groundwork here where we will scale an object. We'll scale one object to be bigger and one object to be smaller. And then you'll really see our collision is broken when, once we do that. So I hope to see you next time.